Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed, not Hammer Unboxed or Harbour Boxed or whatever YouTube thinks I'm saying, it is Hardware Unboxed. Anyway, something I haven't done for a while is reply to comments. So today we're going to do exactly that and the focus of this video will be on the comments left on my Ryzen 5 1600 AF review. And the main reason I've chosen that video is because there seemed to be quite a bit of confusion around that product. So yeah, thought I'd pick the questions or the comments that I'd seen uh, most frequently and just address those. So anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so the first series of questions we have are all focused on what exactly the 1600 AF is. And although I stated quite clearly, or at least I thought I did, that it's nothing more than a, well, slightly underclocked Ryzen 5 2600, I think perhaps that description may have been a bit too simple. I saw loads of questions asking stuff like, does the 1600 AF get the same latency improvements as other 12 nanometer chips? Is it really a Zen Plus part? And well, the list just goes on and on. So to clarify, yes, the 1600 AF is a second gen Zen Plus 12 nanometer CPU. It's not a first gen Ryzen part in any way other than the name, which makes this all quite confusing. So the 1600 AF is a Ryzen 5 2600, it's physically exactly the same chip, but with a slight reduction in clock speed. I think all this confusion comes in when we say the 1600 AF has been moved to the 12 nanometer process. People assume this means the Ryzen 5 1600's Zen dies have been moved from 14 nanometers to 12 nanometers, when in reality, the Ryzen 5 1600 as we knew it has ended production. But rather than kill that part entirely, AMD is replacing it with a downclocked Ryzen 5 2600 and just changing the name. It seems very likely that AMD is making the 1600 AF from lower bin chips because that means they don't have to guarantee 2600 clock speeds. But why they don't just call it something like the 2600L? Bit strange, I've asked AMD why they didn't do that and they said they created the 1600 AF to service markets where the Ryzen 5 1600 is still popular. So, okay, that must be a thing. Uh, they went on to say that they didn't want to confuse the market with another part, and since there are no downsides to the consumer, uh, they were okay with keeping the name. Another series of comments that popped up claimed that the 1600 AF is a Ryzen 5 2600, but with a Ryzen 5 1600 memory controller. This is a truly bizarre theory for a few reasons, and I can assure you that that's not the case. As I said, the 1600 AF is nothing more than a 2600 with a slight reduction in operating frequency. It's no small thing to change the IMC. As the name suggests, the memory controller is integrated into the die. Basically, AMD would be creating some sort of new hybrid Zen architecture. So no, they haven't done that. And I can assure those of you who are adamant that the 1600 AF features a first gen IMC, that is 100% not the case. While on the subject of memory, this is a comment I get asked quite a lot. Dakota says, why is the max memory for the Ryzen 5 1600 DDR4 2666? And we're talking about the original Ryzen 5 1600 here, so the 14 nanometer model. And Dakota also says, I've been running mine at DDR4 3200 since launch. So this is a question that comes up quite often when talking about official memory support for both AMD and Intel processors. Basically, AMD and Intel validate their processors for a certain memory frequency, and then the frequency they land on is the maximum spec that these CPUs are guaranteed to work at. So while some of the better silicon chips, they might work at up to DDR4 3800, for example, the worst silicon uh, they deem usable might only work at up to DDR4 3000. So if yields are good enough to allow an acceptable volume of chips to run at DDR4 3000, the official spec will end up very near to that frequency. But what it doesn't mean is this is the maximum frequency you'll be able to operate at, assuming this is an unlocked CPU, of course, with an unlocked chipset. So as decoders found, although the Ryzen 5 1600's official memory spec calls for DDR4 2666, you might not and probably won't be limited to that frequency. Another question I've seen numerous times relates to BIOS compatibility. Basically, many are confused if the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, which as I've said, really is a second gen Ryzen part, uh, they're confused whether it will require a second gen BIOS to work. And really that's a pretty good question. Because this is a Zen Plus processor, you will require a second gen Ryzen BIOS to support it. So this could potentially create some issues, but realistically, at this point, anyone buying a Ryzen processor who still has an older 
300 series motherboard should have second gen BIOS installed. AMD's told me that all boards manufactured since 2018 have shipped with second gen support. So this shouldn't be an issue, but be aware you will need to make sure you have second gen support. I've seen a few people claim they installed the 1600AF on a B350 board without updating the BIOS and it worked just fine, but that won't be the case. In this instance, they would have already had the second gen BIOS installed and they just didn't know it. A lot of you are interested to know if the 1600AF would work on an X570 motherboard, which is slightly strange given I said I tested mine on the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. But anyway, yes, the 1600AF will work on any and all X570 motherboards. And in fact, you can now use all first gen parts, the real first gen parts that is, so the original Zen architecture uh, on X570 motherboards using the latest AGISA version and that introduced support for those older CPUs. It seems quite a few of you wanted to know what AF means, other than the obvious. Maybe some of our younger viewers shouldn't uh, Google what does AF mean. Anyway, we got quite a few good AF memes in the comments. Uh, I liked this particular one by uh, Lalo. <laughs> Lalo. Uh, that was what my youngest daughter called yellow for about a year. Anyway, in short, the first gen parts featured the letters AE at the end of the product identification, while the second gen parts such as the 2600, the 2600X, 2700X, and so on, they've always been AF, and F comes after E in the alphabet. That's, that's it really. And since the 1600 AF is really a second gen part, it gets a second gen ID. Oh, and a quick correction for one of my mistakes that I made in that video uh, that was pointed out by a few of you. When creating the table comparing the Ryzen 5 1600, the 1600 AF, the 2600 and the 3600, uh, I merged the cells together for the L3 cache. So basically that table incorrectly stated that the 3600 had uh, 16 megabytes of L3 cache when really it has 32 megabytes. So yeah, a small error on my behalf, but still very annoying all the same. So apologies for that error, and I'll be showing the correct table now. When discussing the gaming results, I noted that under realistic conditions with a lesser CPU, so something that's slower than a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, that there would be no real performance difference between the 1600, 1600 AF, and the 2600. And this led to Plonk um, asking if I could create a CPU slash GPU scaling video. Well, the good news is I've already done that, not quite with the spread of CPUs requested here, but it does include the 2600, 3600, 3900X, and 9900K, so you can probably work out where the other parts will end up based on that data. I'll provide a link in the video description. Okay, Will has a great question here. Basically, he asks, what are some of the ways to tell the difference between the 1600 AF and the 1600 AE? Is it a case of looking at the precision boost frequency? Well, unfortunately, both parts have the same 3.6 gigahertz precision boost frequency, despite the fact that they actually operate at different frequencies. Uh, also, retailers often just copy and paste this information and then forget to make the updates when necessary. I think the best way to know what you're actually buying is to purchase from a retailer that lists the parts ID or the box code. On Amazon, the 1600 AE and the 1600 AF codes are shown in the title, so that makes it really easy to distinguish between the two. Short of that, look for which cooler is included. Uh, the 1600 AF comes with the Wraith Stealth, whereas the original 1600 comes with the Wraith Spire. But again, retailers often fail to update this information, so if in doubt, just send the seller a message asking for, well, the exact information on the part they're selling. Lando is his name, says, now, if only I could get a motherboard for $85 as well. Well, the good news is you, you can. There are plenty of AM4 motherboards for well under $85. A brand new B450 boards, for example, they start at just $60. Hell, you can often find the MSI B450 Tomahawk on sale or refurbished for around $85 to $90. And that board will support the Ryzen 9 3950X. Also, right now on Newegg.com, as an example, there are almost a dozen B450 boards priced below $85. So it isn't like one of those super cheap Xeon CPUs that require a $200 X79 motherboard. Budget AM4 motherboards are plentiful, and this is one of the reasons why secondhand Ryzen CPUs are just far better investments. Well, that and you actually have an upgrade path. Okay, uh, Donovan says, I, as in me, Steve, should have included the 3200G it has a similar price. Yeah, look, there's always one, two, three, or more CPUs that could have been added to the list, but there's only so much time I have available for testing and fitting dozens of CPUs in a graph that's legible is no easy task. Just ask Gamers Nexus. 
Just kidding. I love your work, American Steve. Anyway, yeah, the 3200G, it does come in at a similar price, but it is a completely different product. If you require integrated graphics, for example, the 1600 AF is useless. And then if you don't require integrated graphics, then why would you buy a four core, four threaded Ryzen CPU when for the same money, as you point out, you can buy a Ryzen CPU with six cores and 12 threads. Probably doesn't really need further explanation that one. And I don't mean to be rude, but sometimes you guys will be required to fill in the gaps for yourself. And I feel like we provide you with enough data to do so. Okay, we have a viewer here who is claiming the 1600 AF is evidence of AMD screwing us on third gen Ryzen pricing. Basically, he's saying uh, everything should have been moved a price tier down. So we should have got that magical six core 12 thread Ryzen 5 3600 for about a hundred dollars. Problem with this is it does assume a lot of things. Namely, that the seven nanometer process costs no more than the 12 and 14 nanometer processors, and that there were no research and development costs associated with developing Zen 2. Given how much of a step forward Zen 2 was, I feel keeping the 3600 at the same introductory price as the 2600 is actually quite commendable. AMD doesn't have to discount their first and second gen parts either. Intel's never done this, which is why a fourth gen Core i7-4770K, for example, costs more than the Ryzen 5 1600 on the secondhand market. So in short, no, I don't think this is evidence of AMD screwing us on third gen Ryzen pricing. Not even close. It's really just a clear demonstration of how these parts become cheaper to produce over time as the manufacturing processes mature and the initial investment made to create these products is recovered. And I think we'll end that video here. Hopefully I have helped clear up some of the misconceptions or confusion surrounding the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. Really is a strange CPU from AMD. Anyway, if you did enjoy the video, do the YouTube stuff for us, comment below. You know, you know how it works. Uh, you can also subscribe if you haven't done that already, but you probably know how that works. You got, you guys know how everything works. But we have merch. That 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 works. It's pretty cool. We got a, a mug. Got a mug here. Nope. I didn't have Teddy on the set helping me out. Oh, sorry, mate. I'll put him there. There we go. He's been here the whole time. I just forgot to. I moved him around. Anyway, we have mugs, hoodies, t-shirts, all that kind of cool stuff. You can also join us over at Patreon. Uh, we've got a monthly live stream that Tim and I do just for the Patreon members. So an exclusive live stream. It's pretty cool. You can ask questions there and interact with us. And we just, we cover whatever. It's just, yeah, it's, it, it's a fun time. We have uh, the Patreon Q&A. We have a Discord chat. That's also really awesome there. Great community. Lots of cool stuff. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>